This video is sponsored by Skillshare, an online community with thousands of great classes for creators. Ahoy, here is everything. Everything I have when it comes to filming and photography with a smartphone. Well, I've been creating videos and tutorials on this channel for a number of years, and I thought that you might be interested in seeing how I'm going to finalize the smartphone filmmaking and photography kit for 2021, which items I'm keeping, which items I'm replacing, and which items I highly don't recommend because they can definitely destroy or hurt your footage and photos. For the new faces, welcome. My name is Zdeň Kadarla. If you're all about photography and video, consider subscribing to this channel. My phone is iPhone 12 Pro. I use it all the time. Sometimes I also use Android Samsung Galaxy S10 Plus. That one though this year, I'm gonna exchange for a different Android. I have no idea what yet. It depends what they're gonna come up with. I need both systems. I need Android and I also need Apple because I review quite a bit of products and I really want to know truly what the compatibility is like. Here and there, I like to film handheld, but most of the time I actually prefer using gimbals because I get better stabilization. Now, I review many smartphone gimbals on this channel, I have many of them, and I switch them all the time because I need to see how it is actually working with them, how they perform, and I need to be able to answer all the questions, whatever you are asking me. However, my three preferred gimbals are these. For filming stuff for my family, just on the go, personal stuff, when I don't want to shoot in manual mode, just fully automatic, it is Hohem iSteady V2 all the way. If I want to film manually with a VND filter and perhaps anamorphic lens for better stuff, I use DJI OM4 because I can directly attach counterweights. For important videos, when I want full creative freedom, being able to load any lens on this phone with any filter, without any doubt, Moza Mini P. This can handle it all. No counterweights needed. It's like working with a gimbal for a big camera. Well, it is actually made for small mirrorless cameras and action cameras as well. It is a bit more time consuming to set it up at first, get it balanced properly, but it is absolutely worth it. Let's move on to tripods, monopod and phone mount. Now, I've been working with four different tripods over the years. I only have two now. When it comes to tripod for a smartphone, you don't need to buy a very heavy duty one. It doesn't have to be heavy. Lightweight tripod is just enough, but stay away from a very cheap tripod. I had one of those very cheap ones. I bought it so I can keep it in Europe when I'm there. And I was going crazy. It was wiggling on me all the time. I had to tighten the screw every time before I actually put the smartphone on. It is not worth it. Oh, I hated it. This tripod I use is old. I use it for, I'd even say seven or eight years. It is this one, Cameron T210PH. To mount the phone on a tripod, I have options just for a cheap phone mount. It works well, you can turn it horizontally or vertically. I don't feel the need to buy an expensive one. Monopod is a must have as well. I use it when I'm filming with gimbals. I find that the best to have just a very lightweight monopod after a while, if you have your smartphone loaded with lenses and filters on a gimbal, you will feel the weight. This phone already has three lenses, wide, ultra wide and telephoto. Now, this phone is not cheap and it has a very good lenses. The quality of the video and photos are amazing. And it's fun to play with lenses on the market, the cheap ones. I bought cheap lenses with cheap filter and uh, I tried the different brands of anamorphic lens and I tried different brands with other cheap lenses and filters. I was wasting a lot of money. Every time the result was the same. I was not happy. Why would I want to put something on this phone which is going to degrade the quality even more? If I'm going to put something on this phone, it's better be equally good. This year, the winner for me are Moment lenses hands down. I use their Moment 4 case to which I can attach anything. For filming, I love the anamorphic lens. For photography and some video, I love the tele lens and macro lens. I use them when I take photos in their Moment app because I can save the files in RAW instead of JPEG. 
those are the keepers. And if you ask me, so far I really haven't had the need to buy even more lenses. To film in manual mode, filters are a must. And for advanced photography, filters can help you to achieve more creative and interesting results. Let's start with the basic VND filter. Up till now, I was just using a cheap one, 52 millimeter ProMaster filter. And sometimes I tried the Tiffen filter as well. All has changed until Moment sent me this large filter, which I will get to later. Since they started selling the same filter in 52 millimeter size quite recently, I immediately ordered one and this one I'll use from now on. Here's why. First of all, to attach them to the Moment phone case, you need this Moondog Labs 52 millimeters filter adapter. ProMaster is light and it works well when you don't need to block too much light. Once you crank it up, you will see this ugly cross hatch pattern. The same will happen with Tiffen on top of it. It's a very heavy filter and every gram extra is a problem if you are using smartphone gimbals. The only way to get rid of it would be to ease up, but then you are not going to have it properly exposed. You could also film in a higher frame rate, like 60 frames per second and higher. That way you don't have to crank it up all the way. You don't need to really block it that much, but it will kill your phone storage. The crosshatch makes your video look ugly and it certainly brought down many of my videos as I didn't see it clearly on the phone screen. But once I uploaded the video to my computer, it was already too late. So Moment guys did the same thing, like a Freewell. Now Freewell filters I use exclusively for my big cameras, but since they don't make, I didn't find those filters in 52 millimeter size, I turned to Moment. Moment split that one filter into two different filters two to five stop ND filter and another one is six to nine stop LD filter. That way they are avoiding the cross hatch pattern. First, I only ordered the two to five stop ND filter and I found out that on a very bright day I need stronger. So I ordered also six to nine stop ND filter. Now these filters are not cheap, but I'm simply done with having my video destroyed all the time and being disappointed over time when I see it on the computer. I'm also gonna be using this filter with my small mirrorless camera because I need 52 millimeter uh, filter for that. This one is a keeper, those two are gone. For those wondering to attach the 52 millimeter filter to anamorphic lens, you need this filter adapter. Don't worry, I'll link all of this below in a video description, you don't need to write it down. Can you use variable ND filter on Tilly lens and macro lens? Yes, you can, but you will need to get different size of a filter. You will need 67 millimeter and you will also need filter adapter pack where you can find all attachments to be able to attach variable ND filter to those lenses. Here is a telephoto setup and here is a macro lens setup with two to five stop VND filter. Besides VND filter, I also like to use circular polarizer when it comes to photography. For that one, I just use the Tiffen, the cheaper option. Again, 52 millimeters filter, and you can use the same attachment as for variable ND filter to mount it on your phone. Next, we will discuss microphones and lights. But now it's time to mention sponsor of today's video because without them, this video wouldn't be possible. Thank you very much Skillshare for sponsoring this video. It's an online community with thousands of great classes for creators. There are always new premium classes being launched. There are no ads as it is specifically curated for learning. You can learn everything about illustration, graphic design, photography, animation, fine art, marketing, and much more. The last class I watched was a YouTube success, Script, Shoot, and Edit with MKBHD by Marquise Brownlee. He's one of my favorites YouTubers, so it was interesting to see how his production company does it all. Researching, writing, planning, filming, editing, and very interesting part of the class was growing your channel. We all love to learn from successful people. I'm no different. The first 1000 people who use the link in my video description will receive a one month free trial to Skillshare Premium. You can find the link in the video description below so you can explore your creativity. It's time to talk about microphones for my family stuff, my personal stuff. I don't really use external microphones. I just use a built-in microphone in a smartphone. And when I film B-rolls for this channel, I don't use sound at all. But 
If you're someone who really wants to use external microphone, who's using the smartphone to actually film his YouTube channel or other stuff, I would highly suggest this Comica wireless microphone. Last few months, I use it pretty much outdoors exclusively. First of all, you can move away from the camera and you will be always hurt. I just hide it under my t-shirt. Nobody even knows I have it on me. Plus, when it is windy, you just turn a bit sideways away from the wind like I did when I was filming this video and you won't get the ugly wind sound. The shots as I'm kind of walking away from the camera, my smartphone will be positioned on a tripod the whole time. If I left it on a gimbal, each gimbal has drift. That means that it will start moving. I stopped using the Rode microphone outdoors, this uh, furry thing. My friend Yana thought it was duster. She started cleaning my dashboard in a car with it. Uh, it was always destroying my audio. When it was a little bit windy, it was catching up and I had to be very close to it to hear the sound. I think for me, it's a thing of a past. Now, out of curiosity, I also tried these cheap plug-in microphones. This one is for Apple. This one is for Android. Um, I don't see much of a difference, but for those interested, let me show you how much of a difference you will get with the audio. So now you are listening to audio from a smartphone. I don't have the microphone plugged in. This is strictly from iPhone 12 Pro. Now you are listening to an audio from the little plug-in microphone and iPhone 12 Pro. So this is the sound you will be hearing once you plug in the little microphone. I'm not sure how much difference you hear. I know it may be a little difference, but it's not that much of a difference, I think. Let's talk about lights. The only light I bring, I actually keep in my camera bag at all times, is this cheap RGB light. If I'm filming something specific, yes, you can light up your object if you're filming in darkness, but you can also use it for special effects and light transition, which I will show you in a near future, in the future videos coming up to this channel. So don't forget to subscribe if you're not subscribed already. And that's it. That's my smartphone filmmaking kit and photography kit 2021. Hit the thumbs up if you found this video informative. And if you have any questions, comments, special requests, leave them below. And I'll see you, my friends in the next video. Ciao. Ahoy.